After overhearing her husband's secret phone call, she leaves everything behind to start a new life abroad. Emma stood in the kitchen, her hands submerged in soapy water as she washed the last few dinner dishes. The house was quiet, the soft hum of the dishwasher, the only sound breaking the silence. She could hear Mark's voice from the living room, low and muffled as he spoke on the phone. He had been taking more of these late-night calls recently, always stepping out of the room when the phone rang, always lowering his voice just enough that she couldn't hear him. At first, she told herself it was work. Mark was a project manager, and sometimes his job required odd hours. But lately, something had fell off. He had been distant, distracted. Even when they were in the same room, it was as if he were somewhere else, lost in his thoughts or his phone. She tried to ignore the nagging feeling in her gut, the one that had been growing stronger for weeks. Their marriage hadn't been perfect, but whose was? She had always believed they could weather anything together, even if they were going through a rough patch now. But tonight, as she wiped her hands on a towel and moved closer to the doorway, she couldn't shake the sense that something was very wrong. Mark's voice became clearer as she stepped toward the hall, her breath catching when she heard the words he spoke next. I miss you too, Mark said quietly, his tone soft in a way that sent a chill through her. Yeah, I know soon. I promise. Emma's heart dropped. Her hand froze on the towel, and for a moment, the world around her seemed to stop. She felt a surge of nausea rise in her throat, her mind racing to make sense of what she had just heard. I miss you too. Who was he talking to? What was he promising? The questions tumbled through her head, each one hitting harder than the last. She wanted to barge into the living room to demand answers, to make him explain what those words meant. But she couldn't move. She just stood there, frozen, listening as Mark's voice faded, and the call ended with a soft click. Emma stepped back into the kitchen, her heart pounding in her chest. She felt like she couldn't breathe, couldn't think. She stared at the dishes in the sink, the water now cold, but her mind was miles away. The man she had been married to for ten years, the man she had built her life with, was having an affair. She didn't need to hear more to know it. The tone of his voice, the secrecy, the way he had said, I miss you, to someone who clearly wasn't her. It all told her what she needed to know. She sank into a chair at the kitchen table, her hands trembling as she tried to process the shock of it. How long had this been going on? Who was this other woman? And why hadn't she seen the signs earlier? Emma had always been good at pushing down her feelings at pretending everything was fine when it wasn't. It was how she had coped with the growing distance between them these past few months. But now, faced with the truth she couldn't deny, she felt like her whole world was crumbling. The sound of Mark's footsteps coming down the hall jolted her out of her thoughts. She quickly stood up, busying herself with drying the last plate as if nothing had happened. Mark walked into the kitchen, his expression as calm and composed as ever. Hey, he said, opening the fridge to grab a bottle of water. I'm going to be working late tomorrow. There's a client call I need to take in the evening. Emma nodded her voice tight. Okay. She wanted to scream at him, to ask him who he had just been talking to, but the words stayed lodged in her throat. Instead, she turned away, forcing a small smile as she pretended to focus on wiping the counter. You good? Mark asked, glancing at her with mild concern. You seem quiet tonight. Emma clenched the towel in her hands, fighting the urge to lash out. Just tired. She lied, her heart racing. It's been a long day. Mark shrugged, clearly unfazed, and took a sip of his water. Yeah, me too. With that, he left the kitchen, heading upstairs as if nothing had changed. But for Emma, everything had. She stood in the empty kitchen, staring at the spot where Mark had just been. The calm, normal routine they had fallen into felt like a cruel joke now. She couldn't believe how easily he had lied to her, how casually he had hidden this other life from her. Emma took a deep breath, her mind swirling with confusion and anger. She needed to know more, needed to understand the full extent of what was happening before she could decide what to do next. She couldn't just confront him blindly. 
Not yet. Not when she didn't even have all the facts. The next few days were torture. Emma moved through her routines on autopilot, trying to pretend like everything was normal while her mind spun in a million different directions. Every time Mark left for work or went into another room to take a call, the knot in her stomach tightened. She had spent their entire marriage trusting him. Never once had she thought to check his phone or question his late nights. But now, every moment he was away from her felt like a lie waiting to be uncovered. One evening, after Mark had fallen asleep, Emma quietly slipped out of bed and reached for his phone on the nightstand. Her heart pounded in her chest as she unlocked it. He had always trusted her with the passcode, never thinking she would need to use it for something like this. She scrolled through his messages, her fingers shaking as she searched for anything that would confirm what she already knew. And then she found it. The messages were from a woman named Rachel. Their conversations were casual at first, but the deeper Emma scrolled, the more intimate they became. Late night texts, plans to meet up, messages about how much they missed each other. It was all there in black and white. Emma's chest tightened as she read through the texts, the confirmation of the affair hitting her like a physical blow. She felt sick. She wanted to throw the phone across the room, to wake Mark up and demand answers. But instead, she just sat there, staring at the messages, the betrayal sinking in. This was real. This wasn't a mistake or a misunderstanding. Mark had been seeing someone else, lying to her for months, maybe longer. And now, everything they had built together felt like a fragile illusion, ready to collapse at any moment. The next morning, Emma sat at the kitchen table, numb and exhausted. She hadn't slept at all, her mind racing with questions and anger. She didn't know what to do. Confronting Mark seemed inevitable. But what then? Was she ready to walk away from the life they had built? Her phone buzzed, pulling her out of her thoughts. It was a message from Olivia, her best friend. Coffee later? Emma stared at the screen for a moment, then quickly typed back, Yes, I need to talk. Sitting across from Olivia at their favorite cafe, Emma felt the words tumbling out of her before she could stop them. She told her everything, about the phone call, the texts, the late nights, the growing distance. Olivia listened quietly, her expression sympathetic but serious. I'm so sorry, Em, Olivia said, reaching across the table to squeeze her hand. I can't believe he's done this to you. I don't know what to do, Emma admitted, her voice trembling. I don't even know where to start. Olivia hesitated, then looked Emma in the eye. What do you want? Forget about Mark for a second. What do you want for your life? Emma sat back, stunned by the question. She hadn't thought about what she wanted in years. Everything had been about Mark, their marriage, their future. But now, with the truth laid bare, she realized how much of herself she had lost along the way. I don't know, she whispered. I don't even know who I am anymore. Olivia gave her a sad smile. Maybe it's time to find out. Emma has just uncovered the truth about Mark's betrayal. But what do you think her next move should be? The cafe was buzzing with the sounds of clinking cups and quiet conversations, but Emma barely noticed. Olivia's question hung in the air between them, echoing in her mind. What do you want for your life? It was a question Emma hadn't allowed herself to ask in a long time. She had been too focused on Mark, on their home, on building a future together. But now, sitting in front of Olivia, the weight of her friend's words hit her with full force. What did she want? I don't even know where to start, Emma admitted, wrapping her hands around the warm coffee cup. It's like, I've been so focused on him, on us, that I forgot about me. I don't even recognize the person I've become. Olivia nodded sympathetically, her eyes filled with understanding. I get it. When you're in a long relationship, it's easy to lose yourself. But Emma, this, what Mark did, it's a wake-up call. You have to start thinking about what you want, what you deserve. Emma looked down at her cup, her heart heavy. She knew Olivia was right. She had spent years prioritizing Mark's needs, their plans, and the life they had built together. And now, that life felt like a lie. But I'm scared. 
Emma whispered, her voice trembling. What if I leave him, and I regret it? What if I can't handle being alone? Olivia reached across the table, gently squeezing Emma's hand. I know it's terrifying, but staying in a situation that's breaking you is even scarier. You deserve more than this. Emma felt the tears welling up in her eyes, but she blinked them back, not wanting to cry in public. She had spent so much time holding everything together, pretending like everything was fine. But now, she felt like she was falling apart. You don't have to make a decision right now, Olivia said softly. Just give yourself space to breathe, to think. You'll know what to do when you're ready. The rest of the day passed in a blur. Emma tried to distract herself with work and errands, but her mind kept drifting back to the text she had found on Mark's phone, the conversation she had overheard, and Olivia's words. She couldn't escape the overwhelming sense of betrayal and confusion that had settled in her chest. By the time she got home that evening, Mark was already sitting on the couch, casually flipping through the TV channels as if nothing had changed. But for Emma, everything had changed. She stood in the doorway, watching him, the man she had loved for years, and felt nothing but a deep, hollow ache. Hey, Mark said, glancing up at her. How was your day? Emma forced a smile, her stomach turning at the normalcy of it all. How could he sit there, acting like nothing was wrong, like he hadn't been lying to her for months? She didn't respond, just nodded, and went into the kitchen to pour herself a glass of water her hands trembling as she gripped the glass. The conversation with Olivia played on repeat in her mind. She knew she couldn't keep pretending. She had to confront him, had to know the full truth. The only question was how. That night, Emma lay in bed next to Mark, staring up at the ceiling, her heart racing. She could hear his steady breathing, the quiet rise and fall of his chest as he slept beside her. The thought of waking him up, of confronting him right then and there, sent a wave of anxiety through her. But she couldn't keep avoiding it. She needed answers. She sat up slowly, her heart pounding as she turned to face him. Mark, she whispered, her voice shaking. We need to talk. Mark stirred, blinking sleepily before sitting up. What's going on? Is everything okay? Emma took a deep breath, her chest tight with fear and anger. I know about Rachel. The words hung in the air, heavy and suffocating. Mark's eyes widened, his face going pale as he stared at her in shock. For a moment, he didn't say anything, just sat there, his mouth opening and closing as if trying to find the right words. Am I? He started, but Emma cut him off. I saw the texts, Mark, she said, her voice trembling but firm. I heard you on the phone. I know everything. How long has this been going on? Mark ran a hand through his hair, his face full of guilt. It's just not what you think, he stammered. I don't lie to me, Emma snapped, her eyes filling with tears. I've seen the messages. I've read everything. Just tell me the truth. Mark's shoulders slumped, and he looked down, unable to meet her gaze. Six months, he admitted quietly. It started six months ago. Emma felt her chest tighten, the weight of his words crashing down on her like a wave. Six months, half a year of lies, of deceit, of him living another life behind her back. She had suspected it, but hearing it confirmed was like a punch to the gut. Why? She whispered, her voice breaking. Why would you do this to me? Mark looked up at her, his eyes filled with regret. I don't know, he said, his voice trembling. It just happened. I wasn't happy, Emma. I felt like we were growing apart. And Rachel, she was there. I never meant for it to go this far. Emma stared at him, her heart pounding in her chest. So, instead of talking to me, instead of working on our marriage, you found someone else? You threw everything we had away for some, some fling. Mark shook his head, tears welling up in his eyes. It wasn't like that, he insisted. I didn't want to hurt you. I love you, Emma. I am sorry. I'll end it. I'll do whatever it takes to make this right. But his words felt hollow, meaningless. Emma couldn't believe him. Not anymore. She had spent months trying to salvage their relationship, 
trying to make sense of the growing distance between them. And all the while, he had been lying to her, betraying her in the worst possible way. You already ended it, she said quietly, her voice filled with sadness. When you chose her over us, Mark reached for her hand, desperation in his eyes. Emma, please, don't leave. We can fix this. I'll go to therapy. I'll do anything. Just don't throw away everything we've built. But Emma pulled her hand away, her heart breaking as she realized the truth. It wasn't just the affair that had destroyed their marriage. It was the years of neglect, the slow erosion of trust, the way they had drifted so far apart that they barely recognized each other anymore. I'm not the one who threw it away, she said softly. You did. Mark's face crumpled, his hands trembling as he reached for her again. But this time, Emma stood up. She couldn't stay here, couldn't keep pretending that their marriage could be saved. The person she had once been, the woman who had fought so hard to hold everything together, was gone. And all that was left was the overwhelming need to leave. The next morning, Emma woke up with a sense of clarity she hadn't felt in a long time. The confrontation with Mark had been draining, but it had also given her the answer she needed. There was no going back to the way things were. She couldn't fix this. She didn't want to. She stood in front of the mirror, staring at her reflection. For the first time in years, she saw herself clearly. Not as Mark's wife. Not as part of the life they had built together. But as Emma. The woman she had once been. Full of dreams and ambitions. The woman who had gotten lost somewhere along the way. She thought about Olivia's words about finding out what she wanted for her life. And suddenly, it became clear. Emma picked up her phone and dialed Olivia's number. Her friend answered on the second ring. Hey, how are you? Olivia asked, her voice full of concern. I'm leaving him, Emma said, her voice steady and certain. I've made my decision. There was a pause on the other end. Then Olivia spoke, her voice filled with quiet support. I'm proud of you, Em. You're doing the right thing. I know. Emma replied, a sense of calm settling over her. But I'm not just leaving him. I'm leaving everything. I need to start over, somewhere new. Where are you going? Olivia asked, surprised. Emma smiled, the decision already forming in her mind. I'm going to Lisbon. Emma has finally confronted Mark and made the decision to leave. What do you think about her choice to leave everything behind and start fresh abroad? Would you have done the same? Let me know your thought. Emma had always loved airports. The energy, the promise of new beginnings, the buzz of possibility. But today, as she stood in the middle of the bustling terminal, she felt an odd combination of fear and exhilaration. Her one-way ticket to Lisbon burned in her pocket, and the reality of what she was about to do began to sink in. She was leaving everything behind. It had been a whirlwind few days since Emma had told Olivia her decision. In that time, she had packed her belongings, sold the house, and quietly signed the divorce papers. She didn't have the heart for a messy battle with Mark. There was no point. The affair had broken something in her that couldn't be fixed, and no amount of therapy or apologies could change that. Their marriage was over, and now it was time for her to start over too. The decision to move to Lisbon had come to her almost like a whisper, a quiet longing she had buried for years, waiting to be heard. She had always dreamed of living abroad, of traveling and experiencing new cultures, but life had gotten in the way. Marriage, work, the routines of everyday existence. Somewhere along the line, those dreams had faded into the background. But now, with nothing tying her down, Emma realized this was her chance. She was free. Still, the enormity of it all felt overwhelming at times. As she stood at the airport gate, watching travelers hurry by with suitcases and passports in hand, she wondered if she was making the right choice. Could she really leave everything behind and start fresh in a new country? Was she ready for the unknown? Her phone buzzed in her bag, pulling her from her thoughts. It was a message from Olivia. You got this. Take a deep breath. Call me when you get there. 
And don't forget to send me a million photos. Emma smiled, her heart swelling with gratitude. Olivia had been her rock through all of this. The one person who had understood the depth of her pain and the magnitude of her decision. She was nervous, yes, but she wasn't alone. And that made all the difference. With a deep breath, Emma picked up her carry-on and headed toward the gate. This was it, the moment her life began again. The flight to Lisbon was long, but Emma spent most of it lost in thought. As the plane soared over the Atlantic, she reflected on how quickly everything had changed. Just a few weeks ago, she had been trapped in a marriage that felt more like a cage. Now, she was hurtling toward a future she had never imagined possible. It was terrifying, exhilarating, and utterly surreal. By the time the plane touched down in Lisbon, the fear had started to melt away, replaced by a growing sense of anticipation. Emma looked out the window as the city came into view, its red rooftops and winding streets stretching out below her. This was her fresh start, the chance to rediscover herself, to reclaim the dreams she had once lost. She stepped off the plane and into the warm, sun-soaked air of Portugal. The unfamiliar sounds of a new language surrounded her, and for the first time in weeks, Emma felt something she hadn't felt in a long time. Hope. The first few days in Lisbon were a blur of exploration. Emma had rented a small, charming apartment in Alfama, the oldest district in the city. Its narrow cobblestone streets, colorful tiles, and views of the Tagus River made it feel like something out of a dream. Every morning, she woke up to the sound of church bells and the scent of fresh bread from the bakery below. It was a world away from the life she had left behind, and she was determined to embrace every moment of it. Each day, she ventured out to discover something new, visiting local markets, wandering through museums, sipping espresso at sidewalk cafes. The city felt alive with possibility, and Emma found herself slowly coming back to life with it. But it wasn't just about the city. It was about her. For the first time in years, Emma felt like she was finally reconnecting with herself. The woman who had once dreamed of travel and adventure. The woman who had wanted more than just the predictable comforts of suburban life. She was still there, beneath the layers of pain and betrayal. And now, she was free to be herself again. One afternoon, while walking through a bustling street market, Emma stopped at a stall filled with handmade journals. The covers were made of soft leather, each one unique, with intricate designs etched into the surface. She picked one up, running her fingers over the pages, and felt a surge of inspiration. It had been years since she had written anything. Her old journals from before her marriage were filled with sketches, stories, and ideas, things she had abandoned once life with Mark took over. But now, standing in the middle of a market in a city far from home, she felt that creative spark flicker to life again. She bought the journal and sat down at a nearby cafe, opening it to the first blank page. The words came slowly at first, hesitant, like they were unsure of themselves. But soon, they began to flow, filling the page with thoughts, feelings, and dreams that Emma hadn't allowed herself to acknowledge in years. A few weeks passed, and Lisbon began to feel like home. Emma found herself falling into a new rhythm, one that was entirely her own. She started attending a local art class where she met other expats and locals, all of them eager to share their stories and experiences. She explored the city's hidden corners, discovering tiny restaurants and tucked away gardens that felt like secret treasures. And every evening, she returned to her apartment to write, filling her journal with memories of her new life. One evening, as she sat on the balcony overlooking the city, Emma pulled out her phone and scrolled through the photos she had taken since arriving. Pictures of the sun setting over the river, of her favorite cafe, of the art studio where she had spent hours sketching. It was a visual record of her new beginning, a reminder that she had made the right choice. Her phone buzzed with a message from Olivia. How's the dream life going? Emma smiled, typing back quickly. 
It's better than I could have imagined. I'm finally starting to feel like myself again. A moment later, Olivia responded. I'm so proud of you. You deserve this, Em. Emma set her phone down and leaned back in her chair, looking out at the twinkling lights of Lisbon below. She had never imagined that she would end up here, in a foreign city, starting over. But now, she couldn't imagine being anywhere else. One afternoon, as she wandered through a quiet park, Emma felt her phone buzz again. She glanced down and froze when she saw Mark's name on the screen. It was the first time he had reached out since she left. Her heart pounded as she opened the message. I miss you. Can we talk? I know I messed up, but I want to fix things. Please call me. Emma stared at the message, her emotions swirling. For a moment, she felt the familiar pull of the past, the part of her that had spent years trying to fix things, trying to make their marriage work. But as she looked around at the city she had come to love, she realized that going back to that life wasn't an option. She couldn't undo the betrayal. She couldn't go back to being the woman who had sacrificed everything for someone else. Without hesitating, she deleted the message and slipped her phone back into her bag. She didn't need to talk to Mark. She didn't need his apologies or explanations. She had already moved on, and there was no room in her new life for the man who had broken her heart. That night, Emma sat at her favorite cafe, watching the world move around her. The air was warm, and the sounds of music and laughter filled the street. She opened her journal and began to write, the words flowing easily now. This is my life, she wrote. Not his, not ours, mine. And for the first time, I'm living it on my own terms. As the sun set over the city, Emma closed her journal and smiled. She had left everything behind, but in doing so, she had found herself again. And that, she realized, was the greatest gift of all. Emma has fully embraced her new life in Lisbon. But do you think she made the right decision in ignoring Mark's message? Could she ever find closure? Or has she already found it? Share your thoughts. The warm evening breeze drifted through the narrow streets of Lisbon, carrying the scent of jasmine and sea salt. Emma sat at her favorite cafe, a small table tucked away near the corner, as she watched the last rays of sunlight disappear behind the terracotta rooftops. The city had become her sanctuary, a place where she had begun to rebuild herself piece by piece. It was hard to believe she had been here for only two months. In many ways, it felt like she had been living this new life for much longer, perhaps her whole life. As she sipped her wine, Emma thought back to the message from Mark, the one she had deleted without hesitation. There had been no second thoughts, no what-ifs. For the first time, Emma knew she didn't need closure from him. She had already found it within herself. Since arriving in Lisbon, Emma had discovered that moving on wasn't about waiting for someone else to give you closure. It was about making peace with your own decisions. And she had made hers. She had left behind the pain, the betrayal, and the broken marriage. What lay ahead was entirely hers to shape and that thought filled her with a kind of quiet joy she hadn't felt in years. The following morning, Emma decided to explore parts of the city she hadn't yet visited. She wandered through the maze-like streets of Alfama, listening to the distant strains of Fadu music drifting from nearby taverns. She took her time, stopping at little boutiques, admiring the colorful tiles that adorned the old buildings, and enjoying the simplicity of the day. There was no rush, no pressure, just the freedom to experience the world at her own pace. As she sat on the steps of the Miraduro de Santa Luzia, overlooking the wide expanse of the Tagus River, she pulled out her journal. Writing had become a daily ritual for Emma, a way to make sense of her thoughts and capture the beauty she encountered each day. The blank pages were slowly filling with sketches, memories, and reflections things she had once thought she'd lost forever. She opened the journal to the page she had been working on the night before. The words seemed to come easily now, like they had always been waiting for her to pick up a pen and let them out. Sometimes, the life you plan falls apart so that the life you were meant to live can begin. Emma smiled as she read the sentence back to herself. 
It had taken her a long time to understand that truth. She had spent years trying to hold her marriage together, trying to fix things that were beyond repair. But now, she saw clearly that leaving had been the most important choice she had ever made. Not just because Mark had betrayed her, but because staying in that life would have meant losing herself completely. Later that afternoon, Emma met up with a few friends she had made through her art class. They were a mix of locals and expats, all of them artists, travelers, and dreamers. They had taken her in with open arms, welcoming her into their tight-knit community. Together, they spent the day wandering through a local art market, admiring the vibrant works on display and chatting with the vendors. It felt good to be surrounded by people who shared her newfound love for creativity and exploration. They talked about their art, their dreams, and the places they still wanted to visit. For the first time in a long while, Emma felt like she belonged somewhere, like she had found her people. As the day drew to a close, they all gathered at a nearby rooftop bar, watching the sun set over the city. The sky turned a brilliant shade of orange, the kind of sunset that took your breath away. Emma leaned against the railing, sipping her drink, and took it all in. This was the life she had chosen, and it was beautiful. That evening, after saying goodbye to her friends, Emma returned to her apartment. The cozy space had become her haven, filled with light and warmth. She looked around at the little details she had added to make it feel like home. The hand-painted tiles she had picked up at a market, the small plants that now adorned her windowsill, and the sketches that lined the walls. It wasn't much, but it was hers. Emma set her bag down and checked her phone, half expecting another message from Mark. But there was nothing, and that she realized was exactly how she wanted it to be. The silence from him wasn't something to fear. It was a gift. She curled up on the couch, pulling her journal in her lap, and began to write again. Today, I watch the sunset from a rooftop with friends who make me laugh and inspire me to create. I feel more like myself here than I ever did back home. It's strange how leaving everything behind has made me feel more whole. I used to think that starting over would be terrifying, but now I see that it's the most freeing thing I've ever done. She paused, letting the words settle on the page. Then she continued, Mark was a chapter in my life, but he isn't the whole story. I know now that I don't need his apology or his explanations. I don't need to fix anything with him. The person I needed to heal was myself, and I'm doing that. Every day, Emma smiled as she closed the journal. She had spent so long waiting for someone else to give her the answers, to tell her how to move forward. But in the end, it had been up to her all along. She didn't need anyone else's permission to live the life she wanted. The next morning, Emma woke early and decided to take a walk by the river. The air was cool, the city still waking up. As she strolled along the waterfront, the early light reflecting off the water, she felt an overwhelming sense of peace. She had no idea what the future held, and for the first time, that uncertainty didn't scare her. Her phone buzzed again, and for a moment, she thought it might be Mark. But when she looked down, it was a message from Olivia. How's everything going, adventurer? Miss you like crazy. Emma smiled, typing back quickly. Everything's amazing. I feel like I'm finally living the life I was always meant to live. She hit send then tucked her phone back in her pocket, her heart full. She hadn't known what to expect when she left her old life behind, but what she had found was more than she could have ever imagined. As she stood by the river, watching the gentle flow of the water, Emma knew that she had made the right choice. She had let go of the past, let go of the pain, and in doing so, she had made space for something new, something that was entirely hers. Her life in Lisbon wasn't perfect. It wasn't always easy, but it was real, and it was hers. With one last glance at the water, Emma turned and walked back into the city, ready for whatever came next. Emma has found peace in her decision to leave her old life behind and start anew in Lisbon. What do you think of her journey? Have you ever felt the need to start over in your own life? Let me know your thoughts below.